In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do the tool holder in 3D. So I've already done the first few steps. I've opened up the tool holder 3D exercise drawing. I've saved it into my home directory as tool holder 3D. It says to activate the model tab. I am already in the model tab. My drawing was in the model tab when I first opened it already, but uh, it's this guy down here right next to your layout, the word model. I know I'm in the model tab um, uh, and I know that I'm in a 3D mode because I can see it set to the conceptual visual style. My background is white. My UCS is a colorful one. It shows me the X, Y, and Z axis. We do need to make sure that we are in the southeast isometric um, view, which it was automatically when I opened this file. So a few things that I need to do. I need to come over here to my layers and set myself onto the 3D um, layer. I need to, I'm going to turn off my grid. Again, I don't like really drawing with that grid on there. It gets a little confusing. We're going to delete out the stuff that we don't need. So we only have what we need to uh, be able to make this object into 3D. And surprisingly, we really don't need a lot of the stuff that we see on here. So the things that we don't need, I will come in here. We're going to delete the side view altogether. We don't need the side view at all. We are going to delete these lines here. I'm going to go ahead and draw a line straight up, just perpendicular right here. And then we'll go ahead and delete out all of this that we don't need. I think I'm going to have to trim this line. There we go. And as long as I'm in the trim command, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these two little pieces right here. So that's it. This is all that we need to make this object into 3D. I have a little floater over here I'm going to get rid of. There we go. All right, so now that we are uh, kind of over here, we're gonna walk through how to do this in 3D. It's pretty pretty easy. This one is a little trickier than the other projects that we're doing because we do have a cylinder that sticks up and then we have a hole that's going through. So I'll show you a couple of ways that you can deal with this. I'll, um, I'll show you my preferred way to do it. Um, but I think the easiest command to use here is going to be press pull. So I'm going to start the press pull command. With the press pull command, um, again, press pull and extrude only work along the Z axis. So these objects would have to be drawn on the X, Y plane, and we should be able to see the Z axis pointing straight up. So extrude won't work and press pull won't work if your Z axis is pointing uh, anywhere other than kind of a perpendicular to this plane. That, that the object is drawn in. So I'm going to click press pull and I'm going to click inside the object just like we do with a hatch so it finds the boundaries. I'm going to click right inside of here and then we're just going to give it a height. So how big is this thing? Let's see it's 2.5 wide. So 2.5 press enter. I'm done with that one. It was easy enough. I'm going to click in here. Notice that command stays active so I can keep coming through here and press pulling these objects. I'll click right inside here it found the boundaries, and I'm going to give that a distance of one. And I could press pull here, but watch what happens. I'm actually going to end that command and start it again, just so I can undo to get out of it. But look what happens. So it does find those boundaries. So we can't really press pull right now because it recognized that kind of cylinder, the, the extra set of concentric circles as a boundary. And it's just going to make a giant hole through here. And we definitely don't want that to happen. So what we could do is we could join the outer edges together, select them, type J, enter for join so that they become one big polyline. We could also um, draw a uh, region, this one right here, we could make that into a region which is a flat surface. Um, and then once we've made a region or once we've joined, we can extrude, select this, press enter, and it's notice it's just going to extrude the object itself. It's not looking for the boundaries. So this is one thing that you could do is extrude this down a distance of one. And then we can come in here and press pull the circle, clicking in that little circle. It made a hole going right up through there. And then I can press pull this cylinder and bring it up that distance of 0.25. So that's one way that we could do it. Definitely works. It's a good, it's a totally viable way to do it. I'm going to back it up and show you another way just using the press pull command. So I can move these concentric circles out of the way. And then I can press pull just this one, a distance of one. 
I can press pull this down a distance of one. Oh, not a one. Ooh, that's way too big. Let me undo that. It's 0.25. There we go. Now I can move those back into place. I just moved them so that that press pull would work without kind of making that giant hole through the middle. Now I can just use the regular old move command, pick it up, and I'm gonna pick it up from the bottom center point. Notice how there's a center mark here and a center here. And then I'm gonna snap it to the center O snap here. I still need to make that circle go all the way through so I can press pull the inner circle all the way through. So there's no right way or wrong way to do it. Um, with 3D, just like with anything else in AutoCAD, there's so many ways to get any one thing done. Uh, there's no right way or wrong way. However you get it done, it works. Um, all right, so all we have to do now is piece these things together. I need to rotate this, this feature up right here. So I'm gonna use my 3D rotate command. And I'll select the object, press enter. And this little, uh, these rings of circles come around and we just need to decide which axis we wanna rotate on. So notice X is red, the circle around here is red. So that's rotating on the X axis if we want. The circle is showing kind of the, the rotation pattern that it would follow if we were to rotate on the X axis. The Y axis is green. So you could see if I were to rotate on the Y axis, it would be green. The X axis is blue, I could select the blue circle. So for what I need, I'm gonna rotate on the X axis. So I will highlight the red circle, it turns yellow. And then this is it, I can just spin it in any direction. I can type in 90 degrees if I'd like. Um, I can also turn on my ortho. And then it kind of locks you into 90 degree increments here. So you could do it that way, or you could just type in 90. And now what we're gonna do is just move all this stuff into place. So I'm gonna do the move command. It is important when you're doing the move command to select the exact endpoints that you need. I need to pick it up at this endpoint so that I can snap it to this endpoint exactly there. I'm gonna do another move command, select this object, and I'm gonna pick it up at this endpoint. And oops, you know what? I'm gonna pick it up at the top endpoint endpoint to endpoint here. Make sure that you don't take this top corner to this corner over here. It'll make it just a little bit too long and we don't want that to happen. So this looks good, but you can tell it's kind of kind of Frankenstein together right now. You can see this object, this object, this object, and that object. They're all separate and you can actually see the lines where one begins and the other one ends. So I'm going to uh, use my union command. And so in this little strip right here, I've got union. And with the union command, I'm gonna select one, two, three, four objects, press enter. Notice all of those lines went away. Now this is one big piece instead of four separate objects. So this is perfect. We just did the tool holder in 3D. I'm gonna go ahead and move this out of the way and go ahead and delete these extra lines. And this looks great. I have got my tool holder in 3D.